Today, I want to go over 10 really cool updates to VS Code that have happened in the first half of 2020. A few of these I had no idea about, so hopefully these will be new to you and they'll help you to code more efficiently. Really quick before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by Scrimba. If you've never heard of Scrimba, you really need to check it out. This is the most unique learning platform that I've ever seen. The unique thing about Scrimba is the interactivity. You learn by doing. You get to edit the teacher's code during the lesson. Scrimba just launched the front-end developer career path. This is a curated set of courses that are arranged in a way that will help you efficiently learn front-end development. You'll learn enough HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React to get your first job as a front-end developer. It contains over 70 hours of top-notch tutorials, hundreds of coding challenges, and dozens of real-world projects. You're going to code more than you watch. The normal price is $39 per month, but during the launch period, you'll be able to lock in your subscription for only $25 per month. That's a 36% discount. So act now on this amazing offer before it goes away. The link is in the description below. And these are in no particular order. The first one that we're going to look at is draggable sash corners. I'm sure that you know that you can resize elements in VS Code by simply clicking the edge and dragging. But did you know that you can resize multiple elements that intersect at the same time? So I've opened up a grid here, and if we just hover in the middle, we can move this around all four at the same time. We can also open the terminal, drag it up and down as normal. But if we go right here to the middle, you can see that we can manipulate all four corners at the same time. Same thing on the side, if we bring that out, we can manipulate these intersecting corners. And again, the terminal and the sidebar and the main editors all at the same time. It's an interesting update. The next update that we're going to look at is minimap sizing options. So if we go to the settings and we search for a minimap size, you'll see that there are several options. Proportional is the minimap has the same size as the editor contents and might scroll. So this is the default. The next option is fill. And here the minimap will stretch or shrink as necessary to fill the height of the editor. No scrolling. So you'll see now that it's filled the entire minimap. And then fit. The minimap will shrink as necessary to never be larger than the editor. So no scrolling. All of these options control how the minimap uses the vertical space. The next update is column selection mode. This allows you to select a block or column of code. So if we go here to column selection mode, you'll see that it has converted my wrapped selection into a column. And now I have three cursors that I can move around. Now we're still in column selection mode. Notice here at the bottom, column selection. And we can turn that off. Alternatively, we can use Alt, Shift, and then drag to select columns as well. So as you're dragging, hold down Alt and Shift, and then that will create your column selection. The next update is one of my favorites. With this, we can quickly and easily refactor string concatenations to template strings. So we have a normal concatenated string here. If we simply click anywhere inside that, and then you see this bulb icon, click on that and then convert to template string. Simple as that. The next update is GitHub authentication support. So GitHub authentication is now automatic. You can clone, pull, push to and from public or private repos without configuring a credential manager in your system. All GitHub commands, even from the terminal, automatically authenticate against your GitHub account. So from a new window here, we can clone a repository and simply pick the repository and then where we want it to go in our system. Next, let's say that you've been coding for hours and you forgot to create a repo. You can do that now from inside VS Code. So we have some code here. If we open up the sidebar and we can just click Publish to GitHub. Name the repo and then Publish. Now here we can select which files we want to include. Any files that are not selected will be automatically added to a git ignore file. And notice here that the new repo is private. All new repos will automatically be set to private. And of course you can change that in your repo settings after it's been published. Now let's say that you did create a GitHub repo from GitHub 
and you want to bring that into a project that you've already started working on. We can open up the command palette, control shift P, and then type in add remote. And now we can pick the remote repository from GitHub. The next update is the flexible view and panel layout. This allows us to move views between the sidebar and panel. So if we wanted to take the terminal, we could move it completely over here to the sidebar. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can. We can also group views. So let's say we wanted to move the terminal now into our debug view. Now we have our debugger and our terminal all together. Now let's say that for some reason we want the timeline to be on our main menu. So we can move that out and just have the timeline all by itself if we wanted. Now to reset them, we'll just simply go back here, right click, and then reset location. To reset all of the locations, control shift P to bring up the command palette and type in reset view locations. And that resets everything back to the defaults. The next update is pinned editor tabs. So I have a project open here and I'm gonna open up a bunch of these files. And notice I've got so many open that I can scroll back and forth. Well, I can right click on a file that I want to pin and pin it, and now it will remain on the left side. I can pin another one, and now I have two pinned. Now as I scroll, those pinned files will remain on the left side. They will never go out of view. To add another file to the pins, I can also drag it. Just drag it over here, and now it's pinned. Pinned tabs always appear first before non-pinned tabs. They don't scroll out of view, and they won't close when you're using commands such as close others. All right, the next update is the ability to edit complex settings in our settings without having to go to the settings JSON. Before, when we had settings with key value pairs, we would have to go into the settings JSON and edit them manually. Well, now we can actually do that here. So under file associations, this is one example. We can add an item, we enter the key, and we enter the value, and that's it. So they've now integrated that into the UI just to make things a little bit easier. The next update is changing the case in a regex replace. You can change the case of matching groups now by using backslash upper and lowercase u backslash upper and lowercase l. The lowercase u and l will change the case of the first character and the uppercase u and l will change the case of the entire match. So here I have hello world and I'm using regex to match hello and then the rest of it into two groups. On hello, I'm using a lowercase l, and that's going to change it from an uppercase h to a lowercase h. And then on the second group, I'm using the uppercase u, which is going to change the entire group to uppercase. And these can also be stacked. So if you want to change the case of the first three characters, you could use backslash u, backslash u, backslash u. This will uppercase the first three characters of the group. Note that this currently only works in the editor's find control, not in the global find. The last update is the new JavaScript debugger. So now we have options for Node and Chrome debugging. So I have an application here and we're gonna set a breakpoint, hit play, and there's all of our information. Debugging JavaScript in VS Code just got easier. Now those are all of the updates from the past six months that I thought stood out. Before I go, I'd like to tell you about a new course that I'll be releasing very soon. It will help you to become a VS Code superhero. This course will cover every aspect of Visual Studio Code, from the basics to complex advanced features. No matter what skill level you are, my goal is to make you more efficient at writing code. There are so many features of VS Code that many have no idea about. And when you learn about these, they literally change the way you code. If you want to stay up to date on the status of this course and everything else I have planned, sign up for my newsletter at codestacker.com. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.